I think what everybody was predicting back in 2020 that it was the death of retail has really not been the case. But typically what we'd be looking at in our Western markets is about a 20% traffic decline on 2019. I mean, it's very significant. All right, but you know, just talking particularly about the UK where we've seen tax increases, mm. we've seen austerity measures come in sure. uh, during the recent autumn mm. statement, and all of this is coming in at a time when disposable incomes have seen their sharpest declines, uh, you know, since records were started to be kept in the 1950s. How do you navigate business at a time like this? And do you expect to see, you know, more store closures, for instance, or job losses, particularly in the UK for Body Shop? The plans that we have at the moment for the UK over the next couple of years is we're really imagining another 30, 40 stores is really practical. So actually increase the number of stores rather than reduce. We've closed 23 stores since 2019, so it will be returning to something close to those levels, but, but still a, a net increase on where we are today. All right, let's talk about India, you know, which is uh, among your top 10 markets. What are your growth plans, expansion plans for the region? What sort of investments have you lined up for India in the next few years? So the business is doing remarkably well here. We have 200 stores, we're very widely distributed, and unlike many brands, prestige international brands, in India. We're not just in primary cities, we're in secondary and tertiary cities as well. So we're imagining doubling the size of the business over the next three years. What are some of the other parts of the world that are showing strong signs of growth? What are the bright spots really? You know, as I say, the UK is starting, despite everything that we're reading, we're seeing a very robust performance in that market and feeling really good about 2023. Australia has been remarkably resilient and I think the instinct might be to say, well, Australia can't be very important because there's only 23 million people live there compared with the population of India, for example. But it's our number two market in the world. I and mean, we're confident that India will, will eventually become the number two. But Australia has been doing great, extremely resilient. I think in Asia specifically, we've spoken about India, double digit growth, planning to accelerate that. Indonesia and Malaysia are also showing very good signs of growth as well. So quite a mixed bag, but um, plenty of reasons to believe and reasons to be cheerful. Are there any new geographies that you're planning to enter in the next couple of years? So we're working on an entry into mainland China. We'd never been able to go into China historically because of the policy on animal testing on cosmetic products. Uh, the PRC government changed the law a couple of years ago on that, and we've been planning ever since how we can register our products to be able to be sold without animal testing in that market. And we've got close to 200 products registered and ready to go. So we're expecting that we'll be able to have a direct entry in some form into that market next year, probably initially through uh, e-commerce. Uh, that's the plan, and probably stores to follow later in 2024. There have been rumors that the body shop is up for sale because of a tough macroeconomic environment. How do you respond to that? Well, as we've commented publicly over, over recent weeks, we're not commenting on rumors and speculation. Clearly, there's been a lot of coverage in the media about what might happen. Um, we're not gonna comment further than that. So you're not up for sale? and we don't comment on rumors and speculations. So.